After I came down with COVID-19, my hair started falling out. I loved my hair. My hair was full, it was curly, and I was not ready to lose my hair. So I used my integrative knowledge to start treating my hair loss. I took five steps to grow my hair back in six months, and today I'm going to share you with what I did. I'm Dr. Jake. I'm a naturopathic medical doctor and integrative physician. On this channel, I share with you how I can heal your body down to the root causes without any harmful drugs or surgery. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. Okay, let's jump in. So in October 2021, I got COVID-19 and three months later, I started losing tons of my hair. It was a little bit worse than I really expected. I knew everything I could do to really treat it effectively. I've treated a lot of patients with COVID-19, but I dealt with it for seven days, had fevers off and on, but I didn't really get any post COVID symptoms. I did get some brain fog for about two to four weeks, did a lot of treatments for that. Maybe we could do another video and podcast on that, what I did for my brain. But in about three months after COVID, I started noticing that my hair was falling out. I first noticed it that I was washing my hair and I saw a ton of clumps of hair on my hands. And I've never seen that before. I'm like, what's going on here? And then it just kept on happening. I started losing hair on my pillow. I started losing hair when I took my shirt off. And I was just like, wow, if this keeps on going, I'm going to be a bald guy. And I really don't want to lose my hair because the hair is a big piece of my identity. I've had curly, thick hair my entire life. And I've I started having to shave my head like a lot of guys have to. I think it would really change things. So I got a little scared of what was going on. Fortunately, I did had been treating a lot of patients for post-COVID hair loss. So I had a good idea what we needed to do. Also, I already had a good expertise on helping a lot of men and women that were already going through hair loss before even COVID-19 came on board. So I had a good idea what I needed to do to really treat it effectively. It took me a while to be able to really figure out if it was absolutely COVID-19, but it didn't take too long because I already had been entrenched with this. It's not like it was a new thing to me. I knew that there was a possibility that I could lose my hair. I really didn't think it was going to happen to me. I was seeing post-COVID hair loss happen to people that were having more severe symptoms than I experienced. So I didn't really think it was going to happen. So it took me probably about a week to really be like, this is definitely post-COVID hair loss and I need to get on top of this or I'm going to lose all my hair. So let's talk about what I did to treat my post-COVID-19 hair loss. So a big piece of the hair loss with COVID-19 is that it's a big stressor on the body to get COVID. Even if you don't have severe symptoms, your body's going through all these inflammatory changes, really increasing your immune response, increasing a lot of cortisol. And when this happens, when you have this stress response, it causes this inflammatory response to occur in the follicle of the hair and your hair starts falling out. So a big piece of what we wanna go after is we want to do treatments to decrease the stress response. So a big treatment that I did to help with this is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is great on decreasing cortisol and balancing out the cortisol response that's happening. And it helps draw out the cortisol out of the follicle that helps with the hair loss. Also is really good on balancing out testosterone levels. And that can be a piece of why some people lose their hair because they have too high or too low of testosterone levels when they get COVID-19 and then their hair loss happens because of that. So ashwagandha is one of my favorite herbs that I have used to, for post-COVID hair loss. I also use it a lot with not just post-COVID hair loss, but just regular hair loss that happens in, in men and women. Another piece of what happens with COVID-19 is it is a virus and it is a bad chronic virus. It likes to enter inside our cells and cause trauma to our mitochondrial function. And our hair follicle is made up of a lot of mitochondria too. So if you damage that mitochondrial function, the hair follicle is not able to work as well and be able to make the hair as well. So it slows down and then you start losing your hair. So a lot of the treatments that I did is to support mitochondrial function. And what I did for myself is I used acetyl carnitine, CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid, and then I use some anti-inflammatory treatments like turmeric, which is a great mitochondrial stimulant, but it's also really awesome at decreasing inflammation at the hair follicle, which is a big piece too. And then I use some biotin, which is needed just to help stimulate that the hair growth. So I did that. So that was my whole protocol that I did with oral treatments is I did treatments to support the mitochondria, treatments to help support the hair growth, and then treatments to decrease that cortisol response.
Like I said, I lost my hair about three months after. It started getting full blown, really getting bad probably six weeks after that. I actually started noticing, wow, my hair is starting to get a lot thinner than it was. I started to change my hairstyle because I started cutting it shorter because it was showing off too much when my hair was longer. So I started having a shorter haircut. I thought I started looking kind of like a, a weirdo with my new haircut, but that's what happened there. And then I started noticing little scraps of little hair. Fall. Let's talk about actually when the hair started falling out. And then when I actually started seeing the little scraps, it took about two months of treatment for my hair to actually stop falling out. It wow. did start to slow down after about three or four weeks, but then actually stopped falling out about two weeks after that. And really, all these treatments were working really well, but I think the thing that absolutely stopped it all together is I actually got some good sunshine. I went to the beach, I went to Florida, and I got awesome sunshine. I got the fresh air, I got the sun, I got the breeze, I got the salt water, and that's when it absolutely stopped all together. And then actually seeing little sprigs of hair coming out about four weeks after that, okay. I actually start seeing hair start showing up. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening and I started recommending this to all my patients that they needed to get good sun exposure. A lot of my patients were coming in during winter time. So I was actually recommending that they go take vacations for like a week or so because you need to get that sun exposure. One piece is the vitamin D, but also the cellular responses that happen when the sun actually hits the scalp. So I haven't talked about this and this is something we need to talk about too is I did some antimicrobial treatments to help treat my hair also i forgot about that is i did an antimicrobial shampoo that i used it was created by dr christopher's it has some phytum in there and has other herbs that help regenerate hair stimulation but also has antimicrobial aspects to it so when the uv light hits the scalp and goes through the hair it actually is killing any microbes that might be there there's a reactivation of certain bugs this might sound a little gross but a lot of people losing hair has certain microbes on their hair and when you get COVID 19 it can reactivate these microbes and that can make the hair loss fall out too so it was a piece of the increased vitamin d the uv light hitting the the microbes also the de-stressor that was happening and also the fresh air was ha was improving that but also there's increase of nitric oxide production when the sun hits your skin and the nitric oxide increases throughout your entire body and that increases blood flow and circulation and oxygenation improving the oxygenation getting into my hair follicle helping the mitochondria to function appropriately and leading to the hair stopping and then the hair growth so let's talk about how long did I take the supplements and when did I stop the supplements? So I took the supplements for six months of treatment. So the ashwagandha, the mitochondrial treatments, the shampoo that I use, I actually still use that shampoo. I found it. It's an all natural shampoo and I love it. So I still use it, but I would have stopped about after six months. That's when I started seeing my hair wasn't falling out anymore. I started seeing hair follicles start coming back. So the whole protocol all together was a six month worth of treatment. So we talked about just the oral supplements. So me knowing all of the things I do, I got really aggressive and I did, I do this with my patients too, that came in with post COVID hair loss because I have seen horrible post COVID hair loss. I've seen people lose all of their hair with this. So I re became really aggressive on treating it. So I actually started doing IV nutrient therapy drips, IV nutrient therapy with amino acids that will help support the stress response and help stimulate regeneration and healing. And I also started using glutathione IV also with that, that's antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, stimulating mitochondrial function. And then I also did hyperbaric oxygen therapy to get that oxygen back into that hair for alcohol, stimulate regeneration and healing. So I forgot about mentioning that. Those are some treatments that I did to help stimulate my hair growth too. And I did that, those intensive treatments for about two or three months. And then three months after that, I took just the supplements and then yeah six months all together worth of all these treatments that I did my hair actually started becoming coming back to normal did these treatments make my hair more lush and better than it was before that is a good question I actually changed my hairstyle a little bit and I started I used to do more of a wavy style and I changed it more to a curly style during this time so I would say I like my hair more now than I did back then 
but it is, I think it is probably thicker than it's ever been, honestly, than before getting COVID. I started noticing that I was losing hair in my widow's peak, especially on the right side. And I really don't see that as much anymore. So I, I, I think it has improved from where it was. So patients that have worse hair loss than me that actually lost all their hair, how long does it take for them to get treatment and get results? And what did I do? What did I do for them? So it takes longer typically to start seeing, no, it's about similar to stop, to stop the hair loss. So about four to eight weeks, we could see the hair actually stop altogether and stop losing the hair. Now, what takes longer is actually getting the hair to start coming back because they've got they've got some scarring going on. They've lost all their hair. They, there's a lot of inflammation going on. There's a huge autoimmune response happening and that's why they're losing all their hair. So we have to work on calming that immune response down, the autoimmune reaction that's happening and it takes a while. So I usually start seeing people see little specks of hair growing out when they've lost all their hair and we're dealing with all these autoimmune changes in about six months, I start seeing a little bit of hair coming back. And then I've seen their hair come back to mostly its normal state, but not quite there in about a year. And then it could take even up to two years to get all the way back to their full lush hair they had before. Some people had so much scarring in a certain area of the scalp that didn't grow back very well. So they have some thinning in there, but they have a hair that's covering that up and it still looks good. Once they're scarring to the follicle, there's nothing we can do. So the earlier you could get on top of this and actually get it under control, the better success that we can have. What do you mean by scarring? Yeah, so so the follicle gets damaged, it gets inflamed, it degenerates, and then it forms a scar. Like you scrape your arm, it forms that scar there, and, it, and all that scar tissue forms. Scar tissue forms on the hair follicle, and now it doesn't work at all. It's just a scar, and the, the hair follicle is totally dead. No, no. Yeah. Usually, no, you're not going to see those. It just looks like a bald spot. So the follicle is deeper in. So usually, no, you're not going to see actually a scar, even though I have seen some scarring actually show up when there's severe autoimmune reactions happening, like in COVID-19. What does a hair transplant do when you've actually had scarring of the scalp? So how, what works with this is it actually takes follicles from other parts of your body, many times in men, like underneath their chin and their beard area, and they put that on your scalp and you actually start growing like that hair on your scalp. So it's not the same exact hair as you had before. It's more like the beard hair or other areas of your body where you have hair follicles and they put it there and you start growing hair from that. So they're actually implanting that hair follicle in the scalp to grow hair. Yeah. So if you want to set up an appointment with me or some of my other awesome doctors that we here have at Integrative Medica, visit our website, integrativemedica.com. You can set up virtually online. You can set up, find that, click on that, fill out all the paperwork and set it up that way. Also, you could call our receptionist and set up an appointment through them and you can set it up with me or some of my other doctors. If you wanna learn more about integrative hair and skin rejuvenation, click my videos to the right. I'm Dr. Jake and I'll see you there. <laughs>